A couple of months ago, I published a video detailing how I make about $3,000 a month in entirely passive income. Selling media on stock sites like Shutterstock and Adobe Pond5, I pull in what a lot of people would consider a full-time income entirely passively. It did take years of dedication and overseas outsourcing to get there, but it is now consistent and entirely passive. Stock media has made me about $30,000 in the last year or so, and that's still growing. But that money, possibly any money, is not gonna last forever. Shutterstock sent an email to their contributors yesterday, including yours truly, with a pretty shocking announcement. I'll sum it up by saying you cannot rely on this income for much longer. In this video, I'm gonna break down point by point how and why stock media is going down, something sneaky that Shutterstock has been working on behind our backs, and if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna tell you what you can do about it. Hey, my name is Christian, but you can call me Lil. Make sure to like and subscribe because I'm making some more videos about tech, entrepreneurship, and health that you're really not gonna to wanna to miss. In December of 2015, a company called OpenAI was founded by some of the biggest names in tech, including Elon Musk, uh, Sam Altman, who you might know as the founder of Y Combinator, the largest tech accelerator program in the world and probably one of the largest investment firms in the world as well. OpenAI is an artificial intelligence laboratory with the stated goal of promoting quote unquote friendly AI in a way that benefits humanity as a whole. Now, I don't know what a friendly AI is. Make of that whatever you want. But if you're not familiar with OpenAI, you might be familiar with their language model GPT-3, which is what pretty much every AI writer uses, including the one that's on my own website, Lil Assistance. Back in April, I was ridiculed and then eventually banned in a Facebook community popular among stock media producers for writing and posting a piece about how OpenAI was going to put an end to stock media production as we know it. I got told a lot of really nasty things. Everything from, you have no idea what you're talking about to, you're a moron. OpenAI had just announced Dolly 2, which was the second iteration of their machine learning model for image generation. That was a bit of a mouthful, so just tell me, does this look like a photo? What about this one? Which one of these is the coffee that's sitting on my table in front of me and which one was generated by AI. Seriously though, answer. Tell me your guess in the comments. But these were all generated by AI using really simple text inputs like goldfish swims in a bowl and a photo of a white fur monster in a purple room. And all you have to do is go to labs.openai.com, open an account and describe in very simple language exactly what you want, effectively replacing stock photos. Now, Dolly 2 kicks ass. No, but these aren't, seriously, these are not real people. These are figments of a machine's imagination. And if that doesn't make a stock photographer nervous, just wait till I get to the next part. Most of the criticism that I got for that article were the same sound bites that Getty Images and Shutterstock have been feeding us since the dawn of time. It's not good or realistic enough. There are gonna be copyright issues. They'll never get people or personalities within the photos. And of course, my favorite, Shutterstock supports their creators. Mind if I film a little bit? Lovely. And now it's all the people who thought that this would never happen or that it wouldn't happen for decades to come. You can officially and respectfully eat my shorts because Shutterstock just sent an email announcement to all of their contributors saying that they were partnering with this company, OpenAI, using Dolly 2 to generate these images, all but removing their need for stock photographers entirely. I really don't want to move on without mentioning that that was like the best Americano I think I've had in London. Uh, if you're in London, uh, Shepherd's Bush Market specifically, I definitely recommend... Uh, oh, I'll, get, I'll get the name, I'll put, it, I'll put it on the screen. So Shutterstock's announcement goes further and faster than I even thought back in April. Not only are they accepting AI generated images, which not all stock sites are, they're embracing and partnering with the, the company that does it. If that's not the biggest you to all of their contributors, then I don't know what is. Stock video producers seem to be getting in like these, I don't know, these pissing contests. Like they've got some mild form of Stockholm syndrome. They, they just, they, they pledge their loyalty to Adobe or to Shutterstock or to Pond5 or wherever else. <laughs> well, I have a news flash for you. Those companies are businesses with one goal and one goal only to maximize their profits. Sometimes, oftentimes, maximizing your profits means cutting down on expenses. This shouldn't come as a surprise to you, but you, as the stock producer, are their biggest expense. They have absolutely no loyalty and they will do everything in their power to minimize you. 
Now, critics of this video will probably be really quick to point out Shutterstock's own words here, uh, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and read them. Given the collective nature of generative content, we developed a revenue share com compensation model where contributors whose content was involved in training the model will receive a share of the earnings from data sets and blah, 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 blah. This is super vague, intentionally so. If you wanna work in stock, if you wanna maximize your own income, you have to work with them and they know it and they will f you over for it if it helps their bottom line. My personal favorite when people say that Shutterstock actually cares for their contributors, those people seem to have a selective or short memory. I remember the day when Shutterstock announced their new tiered pay system. It wasn't that long ago, like two years ago. I'm not going to explain the whole thing, but that tiered pay system decreased my wages by about 25%. They use the exact same type of vague language to justify it. They're trying to make it look like you get a good deal when you clearly don't. I also remember the day when they announced that they were reducing the minimum payout for photos from 25 cents down to 10 cents. They juiced the whole thing up with the exact same type of language where they were saying that they're increasing their wages in other places and whatever. But the bottom line, everybody's wages went down and they will, they will continue to go down. This is just a long line in a trajectory of downward motion for the entire stock industry. 20 years ago, a stock photographer without video could make a respectable income. Now you almost have to game the system to even make it worth your time. In my $3,000 a month video, if you remember, I said you should skip photos entirely and focus exclusively on video. But if you think stock video production is safe, it's not. I've got a client meeting in about an hour, so it's time to start drinking. Before we move on, I just want to let you know that we have built a whole bunch of free tools into Lil Assistance. Most importantly, we have our checklist, the SEO checklist that we use for every single website that we build, as well as a SERP tracker, which allows you to track the, the, where you rank, where your website ranks for certain keywords in Google. And we're working on a free AI writer, among with a bunch of other tools and resources that we hope that you can put to good use. Everything is absolutely free. All you have to do is go to our website, click on my face in the lower right hand corner, enter your name and email address, and uh, it'll be I'll send you an email. Except for the AI writer, most of it will be available in about two days from the publishing of this video. These are tools that literally cost hundreds of dollars if you go with you know some dedicated service and we're giving them away for free. I put a lot of heart and love into them, so <clears throat> go do it. Now, if you watched my last video, you know that I preach about video, about stock video all the time. That's like what I did the entire video, and that's the only reason that I can make $3,000 a month in passive income. For now, video's not going anywhere. For now, this is not a threat to video. And that's part of the reason why I focus entirely on video is because I know that stuff like this isn't a huge threat. But what if I told you that there are AI models out there, not released to the public yet, but there are AI models out there that can do the same thing or something quite similar with video. You'd be crazy to think that OpenAI, the company that makes Dolly 2, isn't working on some solution for video. There are other companies too, Meta, uh, Facebook. Now Meta or Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg did say that in video they face distinct challenges that they don't with photos because videos move. That's the main, that's the main problem, that's the main objective, right? But Meta or Facebook, uh, Dolly 2 or OpenAI, and another company called Runway are making huge leaps and bounds in this space and they're doing it faster than ever before. Now is this teddy bear painting a self portrait going to put me, the stock video producer, out of business? No, definitely not. <laughs> However, AI doesn't work the same way as other software. As a software developer, I can tell you that software is built quite linearly. I put in X hours, I get out Y result. If I put in two X hours, I get two Y result for the most part. Obviously, that's a simplified version of it. AI works more exponentially because it teaches itself. It learns in the same way that a person learns. <laughs> now, video is exponentially more complicated than photos, but you have an AI that is effectively learning exponentially. We might not be one year away from a replacement for stock video, but I don't think we're more than a few. Without getting all dystopian, um, some experts are saying that AI is already a decade ahead of where it was expected to be at this point in time. If you've ever watched the movie War Games, there it's a movie about you know, like a, a computer scientist who essentially trains an AI to beat anybody at chess. And we had, do have AIs that, that beat people at chess. In this movie, the AI is essentially trained to beat humans at another game called Thermonuclear War. 
And the risk, of course, is that the AI will launch thermonuclear warheads at the Soviet Union. I'm not trying to make any political statements or anything here, that's not my objective. But if you take a look at what OpenAI is doing, the, the, the AI, not the company, can, they've actually plugged the AI into a game where they drop it into the middle of a complex strategic game where they're forced to strategize, plan, and compete, and deceive human players drop it into there with no knowledge of any rules and go out there and beat the best people in the world. In a lot of ways, the open AI is already better than people at learning, at even thinking. This isn't just like a strategy video for the stock media like I published last time. This is a shift. This is a change in the direction of humanity as a whole. And I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole too far. Um, I'm just gonna leave that to your imagination. I probably will be publishing new videos about that in the future, but first, before that, I want to finish off this video with what you can do about it. Because I feel like that's, that's my purpose, that's my reason for being here, that's my reason that, that I have you watching me, is because I want, to, I want to be the person who reminds you of your humanity. Because in the future, what I believe is that that's what's going to separate us from them. <laughs> I, that sounds so dystopian. Maybe that's not the right word, but everything in our lives is becoming increasingly automated. And it's going to become harder and harder to distinguish between what's real and what's not. What I believe is going to make the biggest difference to business, to people in the future. I think that our need to work, I hope, I hope our need to work is reduced. And what's going to make the biggest difference is the amount of humanity in something. AI, video, AI photos, AI in general, is going to be a huge part of our lives going forward. It's going to grow exponentially. And at a certain point, it might control everything we are and everything we do. Why do you think people do business with me? I own a virtual assistance agency, as many of you guys know, and there are tons of virtual assistance agencies out there. There are lots of options. Why do you think that my clients, my customers, come to me? It's because of the community. It's because of you. It's because I make these videos. I think like 60 or 70% of my clientele now have come from my YouTube channel. And it's because we create a community around a central topic, around a love of something, of business, of entrepreneurship, of the system, of, of, of the game, of it all. What, what does that mean for you? What's, what's your version of that? You have to, no matter what you do, the thing is is that all of the businesses that we know and love will probably still exist. AI will make them easier, will make them more efficient. You have to separate yourself by showcasing the part of you that makes you human. That's what I firmly believe you can do about this. If you're a videographer, if you're a stock videographer, create a YouTube channel, create a community, talk to people. If you own a coffee shop, there are tens of thousands of Pretz and Starbucks that can make that perfect or semi-perfect cappuccino every single time consistently. But there's only one guy in Shepherd's Bush Market who makes the best Americano I have ever had. And you know what really makes it the best Americano? It's not just that he mixes the coffee perfectly, but he also has this conversation, this allure about him that attracts people to him. He's fun, he's conversational, he's cultured in things that matter. And the people at the chairs, the people who are sitting in his coffee shop, know him personally. It's a community. That's what makes the difference. And I hope that you can do that too, with whatever business you decide to go into. I believe in you, and I hope you believe in yourself. Ciao.